Hey guys, I'm Tu. For this video, I'll be talking about NX CAE on how to do a model analysis for a model with stress stiffening effect. In general, model analysis is a CAE analysis to identify the resonant frequency, so called mode, of a structural model. And for general uh, understanding, mo modes is proportional to the stiffness matrix and inversely proportional to the mass matrix. So if a designer would like to increase the resonant frequency of a part, he can either increase the stiffness of the model or decrease, reduce the mass of the model. Stress stiffening is about the structural model stiffness is affected by external forces. So if there is a structural for uh, if a structural model is subjected to external forces, these external forces would tend to affect the stiffness of the entire structure and thus affect the uh, resonant frequency of the model. So here I will try to do a demonstration and also verification based on an example obtained from the NX Nasran 10 verification manual. So if you install NX Nasran 10, you can try to uh, look, at, look into this article and we can do a demonstration based on it. So this article will require the Nasran input files as such. So you can find this file from the NX Nasran directory. So for example, if I can go to my computer, uh, look for the directory in Siemens NX Nasran 10 uh, Nasran demo file. So these are the files for this purpose. So extract these files and put it into a new folder so you can experiment on it. So for example, I have copied the file into this folder and I will use this folder for my demonstration. So now let's go ahead and open an NX tent. So let's say I create a new file. OK. And I will quickly import, import the input file of NX Natron. So the unit, I will follow the unit inside this input file. For example, if I write, if I go into the key, it by using a notepad, so this file is using the unit Newton meter and kg. So from here, I will choose Newton meter kg and open the file as such. So by doing this, we can quickly obtain the simulation model, which is a 1D bar element. So these bar elements would have a properties, cross-section properties as, as such, calculated based on uh, the cross-section at here. Or we can change the cross-section to a square by creating a new cross-section. So there is a bar, you put the same value as the article, close and OK. So now I can choose to display my beams, uh, my bar elements as such. So I already have uh, the loads and constraint defined when I import the input file. However, I choose to uh, to recreate uh, the loading conditions and boundary conditions here so that you understand how to do it. So for example, if I just right click here and choose new simulation, I can create a new simulation file to define, to redefine the loadings and boundary conditions.
For the solution type, we are looking at solution 103, real eigenvalues. So this is a model analysis. OK. And for the step, we will need to choose subcase static to define the stress defining load. OK. So if you look at here, so this is the this is where we define loading uh, conditions for solution uh, 103. So we can go ahead and create a, a loading condition based on the article here. So these are the properties of the, our simulation model, which is already imported. So for the boundary conditions, we will need to define a loading condition as such and define the boundary condition as such. So let's go ahead and create a force load at the end here. So one node is selected. We will need to define a same magnitude with the article with uh, same direction to the negative x-axis. So this is the loading condition. We will need to later on now we will need to proceed to define the constraint at both ends. So at this end here, we will say fix all the DOF degree of freedom except uh, this degree of freedom is allowed to rotate in the z direction. So Rotational Z direction, DOF6 is free. So again, we proceed to define uh, another constraint at this point here. Fix everything except this point is allowed to translate in the X axis, which is DOF1, free. And also this point is allowed to rotate in the Z direction. So this will be free. So now the loading condition is defined, the boundary conditions are defined, and the solution is thus complete. We can proceed. Uh, but before that, we will need to create a new subcase. Uh, this subcase will be using eigenvalue method extra, uh, to extract the mode uh, that we want. So we will, uh, the number of desired mode in this case, uh, we would like to compute 10 modes. And OK. So this is the subcase to define the stiffening, uh, the stress stiffening load. And this is the sub subcase to extract the modes. So first we can go ahead and solve it. So after that, we can proceed to look at the results. So this is the static subcase, and this will be uh, the mode based on stress stiffening effect. So we can quickly do a comparison with the article's results. So for load case number two, with the external stress, uh, external force, we can quickly check on the result. Bending mode number one, 22.4. So 22.4 is a bending mode. Notice uh, this, uh, this structure is bending. Now let's look at bending mode number two, which is 108.7. So this will be 61. This is not. Uh, this is a mode. However, this is not a bending uh, mode. So let's look at mode number three, 108.7, and this is a bending mode in the z direction, which is corresponding to the article value here. So another verification we can try to make. What if uh, we remove the stress uh, stiffening loadings? Uh, if we remove the stress stiffening loadings, 
we would uh, get the same result as load case number one. And now we'll try to remove it and ch check with the article. So let's say if I remove this value, this definition and try to resolve. And check the results again. So the first bending mode is 28.6 is a bending mode in the Z direction. So 28.6. So for the second bending, 114.4. So this is 114.4. So this is a bending, second bending. So with this, I conclude the demonstration and also the verification process. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.